Hello everyone, Natalabs here, and today we're going to be learning how we can make these boards in the Godot game engine, uh, version 3.3.3 stable. I believe 3.3.4 is about to come up, but whatever. But as you can see, we can basically create any size boards, and I'm going to be showing you how we can do that. So you can see I can type in something like, I don't know, 80 by like 10, for whatever reason, if you wanted that. You can get that type of a board. Um, and of course, you can change the color and whatnot. Uh, and I'll be explaining why and how we could do this and the benefits of actually like learning how to make a board like this. Like why would you even want to, as you can see over here, that's 30 and it reaches just at the end of the, the screen size. So that's something you might want to take into account. Um, but yeah, other than that, so you can see the board perfectly fits within, sorry, let me just get rid of that pop-up. Uh, but the you can see when I extend the screen size, um, I'm just using the default video settings by the way. So uh, when I expand the screen size, I'm actually getting to see more of this, the scene. Uh, so that's just, I just want to keep that clear. I'm using the default settings. And you can see over here that uh, we have a 30 by 30 grid and I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to get any sprites. As you can see, there are no, other than icon.png, which is always there. There's no sprites in this project. So that's something that you, that's super beneficial, just generating it on the fly with code. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so right off the bat, we're going to declare some variables, which are our width and a height. Um, the reason I have eight here is because that's the standard size of a chessboard. And we're also going to have a variable called the minimum size of squares. As you saw, when we had different boards, we had different minimum sizes for those squares. And we're going to actually be calculating that. And it's a pretty cool mathematical trick that we're going to be using. We're also going to need access to our screen size. I genuinely don't know why I didn't explain all these four together. We have our ready function, which just sets our screen size variable because this is important. Of course, instead of using screen size, you can use board size. For example, let's say you wanted uh, the board to, I don't know, be about like this big and of course when I'm using a ruler I mean like there's going to be a square around it like something like this uh whatever you want right I'm just using screen size because it's a pre-built thing but if you like set this um uh beforehand to like I don't know like a uh, vector like if you just set it to vector like a uh, vector of 400 by 400 that will also work like that's not a problem screen size or this should actually just be board size uh, board size, but I'm just going to call it screen size because the rest of the code I wrote beforehand is written in screen size. I'll just go back and change it at the end. Hello everyone, Natalabs from the future here. I just want to make a quick note when we're, okay, so I tried explaining this like a couple times and it failed horribly each time, but when you're finding the sizes of squares, I, when I, in the original recording, I made a big emphasis on trying to find it procedurally. This is how you can find it procedurally. Uh, the reason why this equation works is so with width, so in the instance of width being less than height, we have our square over here, right? our rectangle portrait screen size, uh, we have our width, which is actually less than our height, right? This is a smaller value than this. And essentially what we're going to be saying is take our height and find out the minimum size of squares we need to divvy this air, this length up so we can place a bunch of squares. So we can place a bunch of squares, which is specified by height across th uh, this uh, length and make them fit perfectly. That, that's basically all we want to do. And I just want to emphasize, you don't need to do this. Like minimum size of squares is a versatile value you'll see later on in the video. But we could just type in 20, right? Comment this line out. You don't have to comment it out. But if you comment it out, we'll always get 20. Like, uh, okay, ignore the, the little good icons. They'll, they'll, they'll show up later. But we can just set our board size to something. Like if you want to have like, I don't know, 200 pixel size squares, go ahead, be my guest. But I'm just saying minimum size of squares can be whatever you want. Don't think you have to do it like this even though in the video you'll only see this later on after a day of recording i'm like wait you could just set it to whatever value you want you could set it to like 50 you know that works too and you have your square you have your board set up you know you could have anything you want and don't worry about why it's not appearing in the top left i talk about that later on in the video as well but yeah that's all i want to say and um, if you want to pause and read this go ahead uh it's kind of messy but basically i say that why we how, how the formula works we also don't need to do a fixed size uh, or a procedural size. And that just explains why. Yeah, that's all. I'm saving you guys like eight minutes of horrible explanation. You're welcome. Have a good day. And obviously when we're doing the opposite, which is with less than height, which is this case, when we're doing with less than height, then we'd have to do the opposite, which is screen size dot y divided by height. And obviously we can print it just to see it. So now let's talk about actually making the, the grid. So how could we make the grid? Well, if you didn't know, and I actually made a video about this a long time ago, but there's something called the draw function in Godot. And we can actually use that to our advantage to draw shapes, literally draw characters, circles, color polygon, line, mesh, and I'm trying to get to the rectangle, draw rectangles. We can draw rectangles, which are squares. So let's do that. But we want to do it in a loop or not, uh, not loop, but we want to make sure we have a lot of squares because, uh, 
copy pasting this line isn't fun. So what we could do is in our draw function, we can basically, uh, don't worry about this I variable, we'll come back to it, but we can basically say for X in width, for Y in height, we want to do something. What are we going to do? Well, we want to draw a rectangle, right? We draw, draw, draw a rectangle. Uh, it requires a rectangle too. So let's just call this rec, uh, rec for rectangle and then a color. Okay, well, we can just define those variables. That's not too hard. Um, we have our variables. Don't worry about this color thing. I'm going to explain it, but just for simplicity's sake, just uh, just think of it uh, as this sentence saying, uh, set color black and white, depending on what I is, and I'll get, get to what I is in a second, but we have our rectangle over here. Rect rectangle, same thing. And what are we going to say? Well, if we do con control space, uh, we can get to see the uh, code autocomplete here, and we can see that we can pass in some arguments to make our rectangle. And some arguments we could pass in after clicking control space is position and size. Um, I'm going to do position and size just because that's a lot easier than X, Y, width, and height. Um, I just find position and size easier. So we got to make a vector two. So vector two. And what's our vector two? Well, obviously we have to do something with our X and Y because these are actually the literal position of our square. So if we're drawing from the top left, because uh, 2D access aligned bounding box, um, uh, it's really fast for overlapped. Oh, used for fast overlap tests. That's interesting. Um, but it seems that... Uh, it, it starts from the top left. Um, that's just something you have to be aware of. I mean, most things in computers like start from the top left. Like for example, over here, if you look for the pixel value, which is down there in the bottom left, um, I'm just hovering my mouse over it. I'll probably zoom in. Hopefully I know how to use my video editing program, but you can see the top left of my mouse where, where, where the top left of my mouse is, is like zero, zero. Most things, most rectangles start zero, zero from the top left corner. It's just a convention. So we can easily say that the X and Y position of our square will obviously be X and Y, obviously, and then multiply by the minimum size of it. Uh, that's one thing we could do, right? Because that's literally placing it down, uh, that's literally placing it like block by block. And then we have our size. Uh, what's the size? Well, we know the size. It's the minimum size of the square, but we have to make it a vector too because uh, that's just how the constructor works. And when we run, we get a big white square. Why do we get a big white square? Because we didn't set the color. If you wanted to, right, and totally go ahead, color, um, just do random float, right? If we do color random float, of course, we don't get it working because we have to do it like a couple times. Uh, let's not do a random alpha value, but you can see that we get random sets of squares. And why is it 30 by 30? Well, it's 30 by 30 because over here, it's still 30 by 30. I mean, you could do eight by eight. That works too. Random set of colors, but it helps if it's, you know, alternating colors, not random colors. So what could we do? Uh, well, we can see over here that this is kind of complicated. So I'm just going to get rid of this and say color, uh, just a color variable. We, if we want to make alternating black and white squares, what we could do is we could say if I and okay, what's I? Well, I is just an incrementing uh, counter value. And we could basically say at the end of our Y loop, uh, I plus one, right? Because that means now if I just quickly go like this, I, and I just want to say uh, one thing real quick. You might want to make sure that you type update here because this will force the update. Update literally tells, uh, let's see, where is it? Cues the canvas item for update and it will, it will basically just do whatever's in the draw function. That That's all it will do. And if we run this, right, and we print I, you can see that we're, we're basically getting our numbers out. And uh, we're getting like an incremented value. It's basically counting one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. Um, we can use that to actually set the color of our square. So if I modulus two is equal, equal to zero, color equal color dot white, right? Whatever. And else, um, I mean, there are two ways to do this. One way is typing else over here and then typing color dot black, right? That's, that's totally possible. Or you could just go over here and type color dot black and the default value is now black. We don't have to do an else statement, right? And you can see we're getting zebra stripes. Why are we getting zebra stripes? Well, because our board is a even value by an even value. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I, I wrote it down and I still count it. Uh, but you can see that because it's even, when we go through it and we say this is black. Okay, so that's black, white, black, white, black, white, black, white. Every even number is white. Every even number is white. So that, that, that means this entire row will be white, this entire row will be white, and this entire row will be white, which is exactly what we're seeing over here. How do we fix this? Well, if we look at in an example of something that is odd by even, we can see that black, white, black, white, black, white, black, white. That means we'll have a checkerboard type pattern. Like 
uh, like this. Uh, whatever, I could just I could just do this. We'll have a checkerboard pattern like this, uh, like that, like that. Yeah, uh, bas basically a like a chessboard, right? So, if we see that we're having an issue with the counter, we could change the counter, or we can change how the counter is counting. We have to make sure that these values or these values are offset by one, right? They don't have to be offset by one over here, but when we get to the next row or column, basically, we want to make sure that this is actually counting eight. This is counting nine. This is counting 10. And then we would get the offset pattern. But we could easily say that because at the end of our loop, we could just say I plus one, but we could just indent it further. And if, if that's confusing, we're basically saying I plus one. So for every X in width, so it doesn't, it doesn't really matter um, unless you're trying to make a chessboard because I think it matters if the it does matter if the king is on the black or white square, um, depending on what color pieces you're playing. But in general, if we say, like, let's say this starts at two, right? Oh, God, I need to make a copy of it or whatever. I could just write it in a different color. So let's say this is our new set of code, right, with I plus one. When we start, we're starting off with one. So we're going to be, or we're going to be starting off with, yeah, we're, uh, we're going to be starting off with, well, we're, we were originally starting off with zero, but let's say we start off starting off with two now, right? Uh, because I, let's say I starts at one. Uh, so we're going to start off at two, three, four, five, six, please excuse the writing, eight. And now when we get to the next column, right, next column over here, we're going to be starting off with nine, right, because we add it at the end, and then we're going to be adding it again, 10. Now we have a problem with our odd size boards. And it's easier if I just show it, like, if I just demonstrate, so you can see that we're getting eight by eight boards, no problem. But if I do nine, right, nine, you can see if I do a, a board with nine squares, uh, we have an issue again. And but if I comment this line out with nine squares, we don't have the issue. So it's just easy in our code. If you know your board size is board size is in advance, you don't have to put this line in. But if you don't, then it would be really helpful if uh, for you if you typed an if um, you know width and height. It would be really helpful if you did something like if width uh, modulus two and height modulus two are both equal to zero, right? If they're both equal to zero, then I plus equals one. So now you can see that when we have eight by nine, we're perfectly fine. And we have an eight by eight board, we're also perfectly fine. And we can also go over here and re readjust our board size. So now you can see it's a small board. If we do something like nine, the board will still be 400 by 400 pixel always. It will, or not always technically, because let's say I do something like, yeah, let's do 800 squares by eight. You can see that it will take some time and also, it's very, very small. Like there are like a bunch of squares over here and we're basically not going to be able to see the white ones. Uh, but if I do something like 80, we're going to be able to see the white ones. Obviously it's kind of hard to see them, but still, that's still in a 400 by 400 range. And if you don't believe me, right? Let's say you don't believe me. Uh, we could just take this. We could just, we could just take a screenshot, head over to paint and we can count the pixels. Um, if you give me a second. Starting from here all the way to here. If you see in the bottom, left uh basically we have a 400 by 41 pixel box and the only reason it's not stretched downwards is because literally the the height of our box is not enough like it doesn't go all the way down there so that's why it's stuck at 41 pixels but uh hey at least i proved that you could change the board size and if you want to change where the board starts counting from so let's say you want to position it in the center or something like that uh, that's also possible. You just have to create an offset variable. So var offset, and uh, this is kind of like going beyond what I originally planned for the video. Um, wow, that's that's way too long for a video of about chessboards. But uh, let's say you had an offset, right? And let's just hard code it in because why not? Two hundred by two hundred. Actually, no. Let's just do fifty by fifty because um, the default Godot window size is six hundred. So four forty plus four four hundred plus fifty is four fifty, and it'll fit whatever. Um, if we go into our constructor for our rectangle, if we go over here and we just see which one is positioned, this one's position. If we just add our offset dot X and our offset dot Y, like if we just add an offset value, then our board starts. Oh my God. Then we just have a board floating in the, the center. You could continue and expand and do whatever you want. And if you wanted to add a sprite or if you wanted to add a object, so let's, and then this is going beyond the entire original script of the video. But let's say we had like a pointer or something like that um, to help troops position themselves on uh, the board, right? We have a pointer. Let's say we have, a, yeah, let's say we have a pointer and we have a sprite attached to our pointer. Uh, sprite, uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, just shrink it down a bit. 
and we wanted to place them onto the board, right? What we what could we do? We could in our draw function in our loop. You shouldn't really do this in the draw function, but it doesn't really matter. Hello, not allowed from the future here. Yes, it does matter. Um, I was being stupid before. You can't really put uh, place pointers into the draw function. So over here, if we go to the draw function, you can see I got rid of that code. Um, that's because let's say you keep updating, right? Let's say the board changes, right? And the place pointers function, which I've just extracted over here, let's say you were actually placing pointers over here in the code, that would keep on making pointers, right? Th that's a bad thing. You you'd have like 10,000 nodes in a couple of updates. So that's a bad thing. So what we should do is, what we should do is take out the uh, place pointers or the, the code that places the pointers, extract it into its own function by just doing another loop, it doesn't matter. Um, and we should actually place it after find squares. So find minimum size of squares, uh, update, then the then place pointers, we get the exact same effect. That is a bad board size to demonstrate with. But now you can see same effect. Uh, so if we have a variable pointer, right? Um, and it's just going to be a preloaded instance of our pointer dot instance. And then we're going to just say pointer dot, if this is just a position 2D, pointer dot global position is going to be equal to, uh, we could just extract this and make this pause, var pause is a vector two. And if you're wondering what the colon vector two is, I'm just setting the type of the variable. I, I really like static typing. And as you can see over here, now we can put our pointer over it. And if you're wondering where the pointer is, the pointers are there. Oh no, the, the pointers are not there because we didn't add child. Uh, uh, add child pointer. And you can see over here, we have our pointer, they're offset. Well, if we wanted to if, if they're, I told you they're in the, going to be in the top left, what could we do? Well, we could easily just say global position dot vector two of our minimum square um, and our minimum square again, minimum size of squares. And we could just divide this by two and now they'll be in the middle. And there you go. You could, you could expand on this forever, literally forever. And I actually went as so far to make a chess game and I'll probably post a screenshot of what it looked like. And it was almost on Steam, but um, I'm just going back and I'm going to try attempting that project again and this is just the start of it and i'm probably going to be working on a tutorial like making tutorial bits so um this video is way too overdue and uh yeah that's really all i have to say and i'll just be uh and i'll just be posting the code along with various comments and yeah that's uh basically it to the uh chess drawing procedural board basically i showed a little bit extra um than i planned in the initial video but hey i mean Hopefully, if someone could take this and make a game or even make a program out of it or that's helpful to someone, then I've done my job. And that's really all I have to say. Hopefully, you learned a couple things about boards and like drawing and thinking. That's all I really wanted to achieve and have an amazing day. You might want to, sh you, uh, you might want to make sure that you type update. Even every even number is... And just a quick note, it would be a good idea, and this is just general coding tips like clean code practices, uh, it would be a good idea if we extracted this function or this math equation or this vector into its own function. So you can see that this is basically getting us a board position based on the X and Y of a, of a loop, right? X and Y of a loop, and we're just passing them in to get a board size and plus the offset. This is kind of tedious to write. So we can extract it into a function that takes into arguments of X and Y. And this, when I was a beginner, programming this would trip me up so hard what how could we just pass in x and y what do they mean well x and y are constantly changing they're in a loop right so get poor board pause of zero zero right it will just give us the offset value and if the offset value is like i don't know 50 by 50 um over here we'll just be passing in zero and zero right get board pause takes in so if it's like a, a black box uh if it's a box or some sort we're basically taking in an x and a y and then we're going to be spitting out a vector two, uh, vector two, right? That's that's basically what this means. This is what this line of code here, return vector two. And if you want to do it a little bit easier, I don't know why you'd want to do this, but let's say you just wanted to make a vector or like position to return. That's what I usually do in a lot of my code. I, I do like variable to return. And then I, I, I set it up and then I actually return that variable if I'm doing some like extra math with it, whatever. We're not doing that in this case. So you could do this or you could just you know, extract this and just return this as well. That both work and they both provide the same thing. That's all I have to say. The rest of the video is perfectly fine. If there's any other inadequacies or idiosities I made, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to sort them out. But yeah, that, uh, those, that's all I want to say. Uh, continue the rest of the video. Bye.